on episode 11. Yes, episode 11 of Luke Who's Talking. I'm going to talk about a swarm of bees, forgetting a name, and electricity. Ooh, sounds electric. Hello and welcome back everybody to another episode, another edition of the Luke Who's Talking podcast. How are you? I hope you're going, oh, oh, I hope you're going all right out there. Luke with you, of course, as always. Now, let's get into the first story. First thing I've got for you. Now, last week, myself and my mother were at a pet shop. Now, the pet shop, it's, it's detached. So it's a separate shop by itself. It's not part of a complex or anything like that. So we're in there and we went to get some fish for my mum's uh, fish tank. She has a saltwater fish tank. So she's been running it. It's been running for quite a while, months with no fish in it. And so she went and bought a fish. Two weeks later, she went and bought another fish. So then we went back to get a third fish for the fish tank. So went in, got the fish, come out, and we went to walk up beside the pet shop to get to the car park where our car was parked in the back. Anyway, so we got out of the shop and we turned left to start walking up in between the pet shop and another building. And at the back of the shop, there was a massive an absolutely huge swarm of bees. It was ridiculous. There was a heap of bees there. And we sort of got about halfway up, you know, beside the stop, uh, beside the stop, beside the shop and decided to stop and not go any further. So we walked back to the front of the shop and sort of stood there and looked at these bees. And there was like, I, I couldn't count them because, you know, there were so many, but there was absolutely a heap of bees. There would have been thousands of bees there. Now, I think what had happened is they'd actually come from the roof of the pet shop itself. Is that ironic? Maybe it is. I don't know. Isn't that ironic? Don't you think? It, uh, it's probably not really. But anyway, so the bees, I assume, I guess come from there. It certainly obviously must have disturbed them. But there was absolutely so many of them there. It was absolutely ridiculous. And what happened after a while is they slowly disbanded, slowly buzzed off. <laughs> um, but there was a ute, a white ute parked at the back of the car park. And some of the bees went and all landed on this ute, which was very odd. So this um, ute had a big sort of black patch on it where all these bees were um, uh, nested or where these bees had landed and sort of congregated on this um Ute, which is interesting, and actually, and it reminded me of an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine. Now, there's an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine where I think it's James. He's helping the vicar move some bees, or maybe Edward tells asks James to help with some bees anyway. But it's, if if you know the episode, it's the one where James's nose gets stung and it turns into a big red nose, like a big red clown nose. But what happens is all the bees swarm onto James's boiler because it's nice and warm. So he has this big sort of black patch over his um over his engine, over his boiler. So it all these bees swarming and landing on this particular vehicle reminded me of that uh particular episode of Thomas the Tan- of Thomas the Tank Engine. But um yeah after a while the bees did swarm off. But the lady of the pet shop, she was somewhat uh, uh, hysterical is probably a strong term to use, but she most definitely was a bit flustered. I'll say that. She was a bit flustered about this. She was a bit, you know, as I say, hysterical is probably not not really a, a good word to use. But, yeah, she was flustered. She was wound up. She was a bit, um, yeah, sort of, oh, geez, all these bees, oh, oh, geez, be careful, stay away, you'll get stung. So she was, she was a bit, um, yeah, sort of uh, alarmed, wound up about it all. But um, yeah, we we stood outside. We waited. The bees dispersed, and we got back to the car. And we were able to leave. But yes, it was very, very interesting. Very bizarre. Could have been nasty. Could have got a big, big old bee sting. But luckily, no one did. Or at least while uh, myself and my mum were there, nobody did. Nobody got stung. We left, and um, yeah, made it out alive with our fish as well. With our fish. <laughs> names. Now, do you ever see somebody and you know them, but you have no idea what their name is? Well, the other week I was in town working and I saw somebody there who I recognised and it it was sort of the awkward, you know, you see somebody you know and you have that little bit of an awkward sort of stare at them and you're just sort of waiting for them to say something. Anyway, but this guy sort of was looking at me and I was looking at him and his eyes sort of 
lit up, could I say? And he's like, hey, I went to school with you. And I said, yes, you did. Like, I knew we had gone to school or something together. I knew that, but I had absolutely no idea what this guy's name was. So I was there, we're like, it's not like we had an in-depth conversation, but it was sort of the classic, how are you, what have you been doing? I'm well, haven't been doing much, even though it's been like 15 years. Surely we've been doing something in that time. But it was um, a bit awkward, probably not really a, a term to use, but it was most definitely, a, okay, it was a bit awkward because I'm there thinking, I know you, but I have absolutely no idea what your name is. I have completely forgotten it. And later, and I've still, and it hasn't come to me because sometimes you might see somebody and you go, yeah, I know you. And you, and then later on, you you remember what that person's name is, but it hasn't happened to me at all. So I have absolutely no idea what this guy's name is. And I haven't thought of it since. So I guess maybe he was just a really unimportant person in my <laughs> in my life at the time he was in it. I don't know, that sounds really harsh, but it's not like I went, um, I don't know what your name is, oh no, but then later on thought, yes, that's what that guy's name is, because sometimes that happens, you know, you might be looking at, um, you might be thinking about, I don't know, how to do something or somebody's name or whatever, and at the time you have absolutely no idea about what you're trying to um think of or whatever but that later on the same day you might all of a sudden it'll come to you and you go yes 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 that is exactly the name of the person or that is exactly what I've been trying to remember but it's been you know a couple of weeks and I still have absolutely no idea what this guy's name is I cannot remember it at all he looks pretty much the same but as for his name which I assume is the same. And I assume that looks the same as well if you write it down. But I have absolutely no idea and I cannot remember at all what this guy's name is. And it is driving me a little bit crazy. I would like to know what it is just because then I could go, yes, 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 yes. But um, yeah, I am completely lost and have absolutely zero idea. (laughs) of what this guy's name is. I'm just, oh, I wish I could remember, like uh, 20 years from now. Okay, maybe that's a big exaggerated, but I might remember it eventually, but I'll probably never see him again. So, you know, it's been about 15 years since I've seen him last time. So it might be another 15 before I see him again. And I'll be like 40 or something by then. So geez, I'll be old. And uh, so I might see him then. And hey, I might remember his name. I might not. Who knows? Now, let's talk about electricity. Here in Australia, we've got, well, I don't know, you probably couldn't say it, actually, but, you know, we've got a, quote, energy crisis. Because what's happened, we, the government is absolutely incapable of coming up with any sort of energy policy to say, this is how future energy production is going to happen in the country. That hasn't really happened. And a lot of conservatives, in because the party that is leading the country, or the Liberal Party, have a lot of uh, conservatives who love coal. And they're like, yeah, coal, 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 coal. Coal is so great. Everywhere's building coal power plants, which isn't exactly true. So what's happening in recent times is there hasn't been a huge amount of investment in new electricity uh, production because the power companies are going, well, government, you don't have a plan, so we don't really know where to put our money. So it's been dubbed as a bit of an energy uh, crisis. So, and everybody, and well, as a result of this, there's been a lot of negativity by some, well, by the coal-loving politicians about renewable energies, wind and um, solar. You know, they say the big polluters, India and China, aren't interested in renewables, which is an absolute, a bit of a lie, because they are, energy, like India... And you know, China are two countries that are investing the most into new solar, uh, into uh, I believe in India. I think they're doing a lot of hydro uh, development as well. So they are developing and investing in new clean energy, where we're really not, because you know we have a big bit of the country is a desert. So that'd be a great place to put a heap of solar panels. 
and we could have like South Australia have a huge Tesla battery, which the South Australian government have paid for. You know, we could have something like that. I'm not most definitely not saying that coal power. They use. I love how they use the term base load power, which is like okay, but. I'm sure it's just a, a term they roll out. But I really think that we need to have a good, sensible think about how we can have coal power, we can have gas power, we can have or power plants, we can have renewables as well, like solar, we can have wind, we can have hydro. Now, where I live, my state is pretty much 100% clean energy because we have a lot of hydro electricity and there are i think two at least two or three wind farms that are in the pipeline to be built over the next uh, couple of years which is great so we're pretty clean down here but i really think the government and people just need to be like okay so we can have these all what can we have all this type of energy but of course i feel personally that coal is, well, they call it a fossil fuel, so it's old, it's old technology, it's out of date. So that has to be phased out at some point. It has to go eventually. It's impossible, well, it's probably not impossible, but coal will go eventually. So I think there needs to be a transition, a good slow transition to, not too slow, but like in a reasonable time frame, transition to good clean energy I think people need to be encouraged to be putting more solar on their houses, like houses, of, well, two houses across the road and one house next door for me all have solar. We don't have solar. But, um, you know, there needs to be more encourage, encouragement for that. Also, the power companies need to get on board with that as well because you need or you want a good tariff feed-in. You want to be getting a good price for your energy. I think how the the old it's changed a bit where i live the old uh, system was for every generator every unit of power you generated and put back into the grid you would get like a credit for one unit of power back on your bill whereas now i think for every unit of uh, power you create and put back into the grid you get like a quarter back so you have to you have to be generating four units of uh, power to be back into the grid before you even get one unit of power back. And solar, for example, has gotten a lot cheaper, but I really think um, it'd be nice if the, uh, you know, if you're spending $4,000 or $5,000 straight up on a, a solar system, and if you're generating, you know, 10 units of power a day, but you're only generating like, that being maybe five dollars of power it's going to take you quite a while to pay that five grand off your power bill so the initial outlay of course for solar is uh, is high and the return you know it's it's a bit you know it's almost like is it really worth it sort of thing i most definitely think if i was building a house i would put solar on it if i bought one i probably wouldn't because i feel that you know if you're building you can absorb that price those costs easier in your um in your bills whereas if you have to lay out five thousand dollars or for whatever for a solar system and it's going to take you a while to get that money back it's maybe a little less attractive but that's a little just a little bit of a rant about you know energy and people are saying oh we've got to build more we've got to build more coal but how long does it take to build a coal power station compared to how long is it going to take to build you know wind and solar projects that could generate the same or more power in a shorter time because you can't build a coal power station in like you know a couple of years it takes years plural like three or four or five to build one and get it going whereas you could be building the same amount of power through renewables in a shorter time frame but anyway there's a little bit of a rant about electricity and energy for you folks <laughs> Well, that is it for this episode of Luke Who's Talking. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, follow us on Twitter, L underscore Who's Talking. You can send me an email, Luke Who's Talking pod at gmail.com. Subscribe if you would like. Leave a comment, leave a review, all that jazz. I've been listening to a few podcasts and they say, leave us a rating and a review on iTunes because it helps people find the podcast. So if you want to do that, absolutely go for it. If you don't want to, hey, I ain't going to force you. Anyway, I'll catch you next time.